Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Luke. And this is Will, Will and Luke, Luke Discuss. A vodcast. And podcast. Where we discuss content related to psychology, personal growth, self-development, and well-being. This, this episode, episode, we're discussing Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McKeown. McEwen, sorry. Yeah. And Effortless, Make It Easier to Do What Matters Most also by Greg McEwen. So Effortless is like a continuation of the book Essentialism. So we're getting a two for one this week and we're going to try and try and discuss both books. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, good. Yeah, doing, doing all right. Um, really enjoyed both these two books. I think they definitely flow onto each other and it feels logical to do them both at the same time. Of uh, mm. Yeah, fully consume these. And I think it, uh, yeah, yeah, feeling all right. And I think it, uh, it's it's good. It's like a continuation of our productivity series. And uh, yes. listening to a podcast today about how you can get too into productivity to the point where you stop being productive. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm interested just to keep that in mind as we uh, maybe kind of uh, do one of our last productivity ones for a little while. Um, yeah, yeah, but this yeah. is kind of the uh, this would be one that would definitely make its way to the uh, to Bible status for us. Uh, yeah, I think the, the re- real key book they cover they cover so much, and I think it's. Uh, I would, I would love for people to, like more people to read these sorts of books. It'd be really interesting. Um, well, I feel that these ones yeah. are more like an antidote to the productivity uh, addiction you can get into because it, yes, it helps yeah. you s- to do less stuff and to stop feeling like you have to manage everything and get it all in your system. And it's like, no, actually, most of what you do is trivial. So do less of it and just do what matters to you. <laughs> I think there's a, um, I guess, like prefaces. There's a part of me that kind of really enjoys reading these books because they yeah. slightly push back against like social norms. Yeah, and then yeah. <laughs> I, I enjoy, I enjoy executing these. But also, <laughs> yeah. kind of like trying to, trying to manage um, my, I suppose, like my manners and my delivery of mm. like, ba- boundaries and limits and saying yes. no and pushing back on things. I'm sure we'll we'll get into, but uh, yeah, I guess that's something worth bearing in mind that I am. Um, I enjoy the social um, kind of, well, the rejection of normal, like social norms in this, yeah. but also like there's ways of doing that that isn't sort of kind of a, I guess, like rude <laughs> pushing yeah. back on people. Yeah. Well, it's really important, yeah. you know, like some of these social norms have only come about in the last couple of decades um, mm. since the technology's caught up. But so anyway, we'll get into it. So I'll, I'll lay out yeah, the yeah. land of the of the books or and uh we'll take it from there yeah nice so essentialism is split into four parts right well the first part describes and helps you tap into what essentialism means and then the next three parts you've got uh exploration which is how do you um make space to find out what's important to you your elimination. So once you found out what's important to you, how do you cut out the crap? How do you get rid of the stuff that you, you're doing, that you're saying yes to, which isn't really in line with what you want to do? And then execute, which is how do you most effortlessly pursue the things you ha- you are saying yes to and that do matter to you? And that last section leads directly into a whole new book called Effortless, which just gives far more uh, weight to this idea of even when you're saying yes to the things you want to say yes to and setting boundaries, how do you do it in a way that <laughs> that you can relax into, that you're not stressed out with, that is that is easy and effortless? So that's yes. largely yes. the the topic of the day. Yeah, and those um, I guess just to expand a bit on the second book, effortless. Mm. That's split into three parts. So, like as you were saying, like finding an effortless state. Um, effortless action so how do we kind of like make essential work easier to do and then um like the third part which is effortless Mm. results so how can we get the highest return with the least effort so in in general i suppose like the overall concepts of the book is to sort of eliminating non-essentials in your life and then when Mm -hmm. it does come to doing essential things how can we make that easier for ourselves and we'll yeah uh, and get the most out of it yeah exactly and i think um throughout this conversation we'll just kind of dip into parts that we we like and um things that we found useful or challenging and um yeah i think i think what he is saying overall is really that like there's a lot of social norms that we've kind of been yeah. used to receiving that like everything 
related to success must be hard work or mm. we, we have to you know put in extra hours to achieve more and we have to kind of sacrifice ourselves there's this culture of just like mm. you know slaying yourself and like working beyond your capabilities by doing more equals more or actually sometimes kind of um doing the right things can bring around the right amounts of success yeah, yeah and there's a way in which it's even praised like people can show off with how little they've slept and how busy they are mm -hmm. when he's kind of promoting the idea that uh, not exactly that those people should be shamed but that they shouldn't certainly shouldn't be like held up as paragons of what ideals uh, actually that's quite um yeah you know that that's not something to aspire to and to to yeah. see as like good <laughs> that's that exactly. shows mismanagement and poor prioritizing <laughs> and it's interesting how that's a, that's a mindset that you can you can take on i think it's certainly something maybe probably over the last five years i've realized that that's kind of not necessarily the case it's not like a badge of honor to finish mm. work an hour late like so I, I suppose it's worth um just interjecting the story that this guy he had a important business meeting during like the potential birth of his child yeah um and his business partner said that you know if you it'd be really inconvenient if your wife had a the baby between one and two, <laughs> two or something yeah, yeah and then like his wife's gone into labor and um maybe the finer details i'm not describing exactly but essentially like she's given birth and then he's like left the room mm. where she's given birth and that like really precious moment to go to this business meeting mm. it's mm. like the most extreme example of like yeah. putting work and everything else above what's most important to him and i think that was his um his moment where it's like yeah i really need to sort out my priorities and, <laughs> and not not drag myself away from um mm. from those sorts of things i would um I would love to just kind of explain what he describes as, you know, someone who is an essentialist and someone yeah, who is a, a non-essentialist. So, yeah, and then we'll, we'll kind of dive into the um, the techers that he's uh, outlined in here. But um, so, yeah, he's saying like the essentialist, um, you know, kind of only does what, what's truly important. Mm -hmm. He says um, they, they're very careful about what they say yes to. They push back against time-wasting they stop doing things they detest for people they don't like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of reading out the highlights, my favorite ones. He says, yeah. um, and then people are like, no matter what they can, they can choose right now. And I think one of the things that stood out to me was, you know, says only once you give yourself permission to stop trying to do it all, to stop saying yes to everybody, can you make your highest contribution to the things that really matter? And I think yeah. that's what he, the main crux is like, how can we contribute best? And if we're constantly distracted, being pulled left and right, and going for the non-essentialist attitude, which is thinking yep. that we have to be all things to all people. We have to do things. It's all important. How can we fit everything in? It's an undisciplined pursuit of more, he says, which reacts to what's most pressing at that moment in time. Mm, saying, yep. Yes, yes, without thinking and trying to force things and execute things with you know sheer willpower, as opposed to... <sighs> You know kind of carefully choosing what you want to do and um i guess managing your inputs and your your energy levels to the most um most yeah. relevant things for your life and the things yeah. you value the most yeah he raises um marie kondo's tidying up system and it's both a really good example and analogy for essentialism so it's yeah. like if if the marie kondo system is you know essentialism for your physical possessions Yes. This is taking that philosophy and applying it to your time and energy and psychology and goals and yeah, mm. the time, the way you, you'd like to spend your life. And mm. and in the same way, yeah, you can imagine like just acquiring clutter, uh, not not really prioritizing what stuff you have, like having so much crap that it gets in the way of the stuff you do enjoy and not taking yeah. care of the stuff you do have. Um and, and yeah, it's in my head, that's such a nice visual analogy of applying, yeah. like imagining having a, a really messy house of owning possessions that was really non-deliberate and then applying yeah. that to, well, how do I spend my time? And, yes. uh, and taking the lessons we learn from being able to only choose to own possessions that bring value to your life and to yeah. make sure you get rid deliberately of the things that don't and applying that to how you spend your time. 
Mm. And I think, you know, this, this ties into so many of the other books we've done. I mean, what we're on like podcasts, close to 40 now. There's so many we've done, you know, <laughs> think about, you know, Tony Robbins time zones, think about like, yeah. where do we spend time in our most, you know, when we're feeling like most fulfilled and where are we wasting time? And, you know, so, some of the parts of effortless he talks about, you know, to kind of jump across books is thinking about, you know, like automating and streamlining yeah. your life and making things easy for yourself. So as you know, there's kind of like techniques to doing that, to making to making life easier as well as kind of so you can do the most important things for you with the energy you do have seeing time yeah. and energy as as a resource and putting a system in place in which you kind of you can also be responsive to the the challenges in life as well you know like and you know making sure that you if things do come up you still are able to focus on the most important things to you and mm. you have a I'm kind of going on a bit here but you do uh, that you do have a a system for deciding in moments so you're not mm. reactive you, you can actually take you know talks about like t- taking a pause you know says yeah. um um essentialist um pause to discern what really matters and says no to everything except the essential so not yeah. sort of being yeah. dragged left right and center reacting to the world but actually having a very clear vision of what it is that's important to you in that day and yeah. not being not being distracted but <laughs> well, you don't have to be if you're um if you have a clear vision of, of what you're doing with your time and why then you it's easier if you are say not as naturally um a sort of disagreeable or assertive person then having that kind of uh flag in the ground of what you're doing and why makes it so much easier you've got the criteria to say no quickly rather yeah. than like freezing and panicking when someone makes requests of you and just saying yes because you you can't think of anything better to say that's it yeah and it's um it's kind of and doing that in a secure way Mm, not sort of from a people pleasing point of view and he says you know non-essentialism is everywhere you know we've got too many choices there's too much social pressure and the idea that we can have it all and there's multiple priorities like that's a relatively new thing to feel like there's you know gives examples of businesses that are like what are our top priorities? And they come up with like 18 priorities <laughs> to, to do, you know? And yeah. I really enjoyed that. He talked about how the word priority has only got pluralized quite recently. And like, it's kind yeah. of, um, it's a contradiction in terms because the word priority means the one pri, the most one yeah, important yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. So to say priority is plural just contradicts the original meaning of the word like you can't the have word, more yeah. than one priority like that's but we've it, it, he, he used that as a kind of funny example of how mm. we've become more non-essentialist probably i suppose with mm. the rise in my view the rise of technology and the capacity we have yeah. to say yes to more i um i like kind of his way of um kind of explaining the core mindset of an essentialist so you know Mm -hmm. the disciplined pursuit of less involves you know individual choice so we can choose how we spend our time and energy without choice there's no point talking about (laughs) trade-offs um which i thought was interesting you know sort of if we're kind of just saying yes to everything then we can't decide what's more important and i guess that's what relates a lot to the one thing yes we spoke about um last week and um two says like the um there's a prevalence of noise so it says almost everything is noise and very few things are actually exceptionally valuable Mm. taking the time to find out what those things are is important and he says like the reality of trade-offs is worth knowing that we can't have it all and you've got to go like which problem do i want to solve and how not how can I make this all work? Like instead of mm. trying to juggle mm. hundreds of <clears throat> hundreds and hundreds of things, it's a matter of, you know, what can you, what can you do mm. to make the things you do choose to do the best possible? Yeah. Thing, it's the difference you know? between yeah, like, yeah. how do I tidy up all these possessions in my house? That I don't really want versus actually getting rid of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Calm. I think we, we, we've, I think, uh, yeah, we've captured like the essence of, um, I'll give one more know, essentialism. Yeah, it, it, here's a phrase essence. that he uses a lot: um, "Do less but better," and that kind of captures the whole yeah, endeavor. Nice. Do less but nice. better. <laughs> nice. Did you um, kind of out of the stuff in you know some of the core mindsets? I said you know kind of around choice, um, discerning what's um, important and what's not, and trade offs. Are any of those kind of stand out to you at all as um, particularly kind of interesting or re- relevant in your life? 
Wow. Big question. <laughs> big um, question. So, well, th this first, well, not first section, this second section on kind of exploring, uh, he, mm. he kind of says how we almost take by default that we kind of have to do and manage everything on our plate and actually mm. taking the time and space feels counterproductive, but taking the time and space to actually tap into yeah. and consider what you want and what's important to yeah. you. Cause it, it's actually quite difficult to know what matters most to you. It's, it's not like, yeah. so th I suppose you, you talked about things like, um, writing a personal journal, uh, making that a daily habit. Um, I, I've been sticking more at that recently. And like, that's a, a way of kind of, you know, looking at how you spend your time and how you, what feels good and what feels bad and why, um, mm -hmm. And creating, I mean, I've just got back from like 10 days in Italy, right? So creating that space to, mm. um, to kind of take, take a step back and consider what's important to you. I think I, I'm not sure if that's quite in the section you're talking about, but that feels really important and something that's quite hard to do, especially when you feel like you've got so much on to give yourself well, that creativity and that mind space. <laughs> Well, I think it kind of it certainly like falls into kind of like yeah, d discerning what's important and what's mm. not, and like taking the time to to see what that is. You know, like you got you have to you know what he says. You know, part of explore is like look, see what really matters. You need to mm. get you know get a big picture, step back, and like get perspective on things. And he says, you know, filter for the fascinating. So like look through everything that you're doing, like like what sparks the most interest, like what mm. feels the most valuable to you, and what feels kind of redundant and a waste of time. And that could be tasks, that could be people, yeah. that could be even aspects of your, and I think this probably falls a bit more into effortless, like aspects of your your process as well. Like, can you yeah. do, can, can, can you be doing things kind of uh, quicker? Like I know we spoke last week about the one thing about you doing your tax returns for your yeah. auditing and that sort of thing. So, oh, can, can I do that in, you know, um, two hours once a month rather than one hour for four Every weeks week. in a row. Yeah, you know? yeah. That's sort of thing. There, there's sort of like ways you can automate things and make things kind of um easier for yourself. And I think that's that's part of the stepping back and going, like, what parts of my life am I spending too much time on that don't provide mm. the value what? compared to other parts of my life that I'd love to be spending more time on, you know, and what would be most yeah. interesting and contribute the most. It's kind of two different ways of eliminating, right? You've you've initially got like, how do I just block like say no to things completely yeah, yeah, yeah. and like that i'm not doing that like that is yeah not for me and then this second type of elimination which even with the things i've said yes to how do i streamline them routinize them take out all the obstacles that don't yeah. really matter and it's a, it's a similar sort of process but it's mm. that's more nuanced and nitty-gritty whereas the first yes. one's just like no i'm not doing that yeah yeah <laughs> And I, I think, think that, um, that I relate more to that second one at the moment, especially with career, because I think that first, no, I sort of, uh, I did that process many years ago of really trying to choose a career I felt was important to me. And, mm. and so it, and, but, but within what I do, I definitely waste a lot of time and energy. <laughs> so yes, <laughs> I, I, I've said no to a lot of paths career wise and so that discerning part i feel like quite content with in in that area of life but then within the area it's like yeah like uh, uh, so there's some teaching i do right and it's like i end up doing loads and loads of prep and when it comes to it i find often the most valuable things came comes out of the spontaneity of the session and nothing what i prepared for and it's like okay so yes how yeah. do i use that knowledge to because some of that preparation probably it comes out of a sense of security for myself feeling i've got something yes. to fall back onto and actually yeah. maybe i don't need to if i can feel more secure that i can handle the spontaneity of the moment maybe i don't need to put as much time into what actually yes. wasn't particularly um valuable to anyone <laughs> and, okay yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and so d deciding what what discerning what's the most kind of valuable part of that whole process yeah whether. Where to put it? Yeah. Ironically, sometimes it even gets in the way because I get so wedded to 
this idea of what I want to offer that that it's harder to then be spontaneous. If something comes mm. up and the group get excited about something else, you've got to make that judgment call. Well, sometimes it's better to run with that and everyone gets more value mm. from it. But if I'm so like wedded to this, no, this is the way I plan to do things, um, that can actually yes. make the process even less valuable. So it's not just that it's a waste of time, it's actually an anti-waste of time. And also, also think about like what, what you need to let go of within that yeah. process, like let go of... Uh, you know, I don't know, kind of a need for things to be a certain way or for like certain outcomes and kind yeah. of like trusting that that will kind of putting in the right preparation will have long-term impacts. Like you put it, you put in the work to prepare the session that like it should, it should evolve in an organic way if yeah. you've done the yeah. prior, prior work as well. So kind of seeing, seeing that side of things too. Yeah. I am. Um, oh, you keep going, Matt. If you're well, I was just going to say that reminds yeah. me of something you said before we recorded that, this process affected how you even planned for this podcast. So I'd be, I was really interested to hear about that. Yeah, for sure. Let's get it. Yeah, let's get into it. So I think, um, I suppose we, we often, so we try and do a podcast like once a month, right. And we're both, I guess, relatively busy people and like reading a book is reading a book and making notes on it with the plan of talking about it is very <laughs> yeah. different than just yeah. reading a book yeah. normally. And I think I, I've kind of been torn getting stuck in between like, I want to make lots of notes. I've got lots of good stuff to kind of prompt myself and stuff to talk about because I want to make this like a high quality discussion. Um, And also, I guess we've done some podcasts where I haven't had many notes or the book's been really complicated and I've kind of come away feeling a little bit underprepared. So there's part of me that's kind of like trying to, I guess, prepare and prevent a bad podcast in yeah. my eyes or something. One, one where I leave the podcast not feeling good about how it went, which isn't yeah. all the time, but sometimes I'm just like, ah, I didn't quite verbalize what I wanted to say. So my anxiety yeah. turns into mad notes. Yeah. But I, yeah. guess, um, I guess what the part of it I was thinking is like, I, cause we're reading two books this time. It's kind of put a bit more pressure on to finish it. And I was, I was thinking realistically, like often I like to read when I'm sat down in front of my laptop and I've got my, Evernote open so I can make notes yeah. and it's hard to kind of make proper notes on my phone typically. Yeah. Um, but this time around, I, so one thing I do is like to read quicker. I, um, I, I bought the audio book to listen to it on double time so yeah. I can read the book a lot quicker. And also I can make notes whilst I'm listening to it. So if he's kind of made a point and I'm putting down like a, a bullet point and then he gives a kind of a long-winded example about i don't know some aircraft carrier that did xyz i don't know yeah some (laughs) minor league baseball team or something you know like i i can make notes i'm finding i can do it a lot quicker and it's made the process one a bit more enjoyable and puts a lot less pressure on me having to be in a certain mood a certain energy level at a certain time of day to make notes whereas if i'm listening to the audiobook i can kind of throw a few notes on my phone and then like tidy it up a bit later before yeah, yeah. the podcast. So I think, um, I guess to summarize, I'm, I'm making sure that I can be more spontaneous in the way I read books. So I'm not kind of pressured to read them in a rush at a certain time yeah. right before we start. Um, and it's been a lot more enjoyable and, and re- nice. finding a way to streamline the process by like reading it quicker and also sort of, you know, investing the $15 on top of the book I'm reading for the sake of like reading the book quicker and right. enjoying more and also hearing the, the voice of the author as well kind of got yeah. me, I can feel it. I'm more in the spirit of this book, having heard him talk. So I'm, yeah, well, he read them, right. Didn't yeah. he? Greg? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. nice. Yeah. I really like that. And so, and it also demonstrates well, it demonstrates your um, understanding of generally how people write as well. Like, you yeah. know, they make a point, they explain it and then they'll give an example or two and it's like because you've internalized that process once he's gone into his example you can kind of keep half an ear on it whilst you just jot down the well that's it exactly yeah yeah so i I found i was able to kind of read this at a comfortable enjoyable rate without the pressure that i kind of put on myself to so i think there's a lot of um because it's important to me like this is an important part of kind of our I guess our friendship, but also like yeah. a project that we're both kind of sharing on and our learning and things. And yeah. it's, um, I want to 
do it properly. But then there's like the pressure of like, oh, like we've had a few times where we've pushed it back a couple of weeks because we haven't yep. finished it. Or it's, I guess I just want to make it like fun and enjoy. Yeah. So I've said, I remember saying to you once, like, it's nice just to read a book. But I can't yeah. tell it, like, <laughs> without I'm feeling like, you have to write like, Make notes, and notes on it. And yeah, yeah. internalize it so much. It's nice just to read a few pages yeah. and relax. Yeah, completely mm. with you. Not have to feel like I'm buying my computer to do it. Exactly. And there's um there's something in this as well. Maybe just kind of a little side note. He says, you know, kind of in effortless. He talks about you know, um, effortless results. He says like having a um, like trust is really important. Like having people around you who make things easy. Mm. Um, so like, and you also about the benefits. So me, obviously working with you on this project is like easy because we kind of, we can share notes. We're generally pretty accountable to each other. We yeah. turn up on time. Like we're both set up, ready to go. Like that's makes the process effortless and yeah. easy. Like this yeah. feels easy to do, Definitely. but also kind of having, yeah, having a set time locked in in advance. So we're often like, oh, yeah, in five weeks' time, let's do this book. And we just turn up and we're there. Like, I know you've said you've had a couple, you had a friend you spoke to on the phone um, mm -hmm. who you kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll talk to you again next, next like, Monday in a fortnight at oh, nine yeah. o'clock. Yeah, yeah. And the phone, the phone call just comes through at nine o'clock. Like, if yeah. you surrounded your life with people you, you didn't need to, like, check in on follow all the up time up. and yeah, like, yeah, yeah. follow up on, I think, I think that's been a real... um a real enjoyment I've had from getting off like social media and not being part of like groups and part yeah. of things that are getting organized is that like in general, like I just like call people and go, Oh, do, like let's find a time. And it's like five weeks time and they're there and it's easy, you know, as opposed yeah, to yeah, sort of yeah. like this kind of spot firing back and forth. Like, yeah, guess a bit of a side note there, but I, I suppose that's talking about like process and streamline, like surrounding yourself with people who aren't going to, fuck around and be late and like <laughs> dra dra drag you left right you know like i think that there's been times in i guess mine and i'm guessing everybody's life where you're surrounded by people who are kind of just too chaotic for what you're trying to do in your life and like mm. don't respect your time and maybe i've done the same for other people but it's uh i guess that's worth bearing in mind in terms of living an effortless life like yeah being surrounded by that sort of energy yeah. well being able to routinize things that are able you're able to do that with sounds really important right now we've been doing this for a couple of years it really highlights like i've there's no other project i've taken on which i've tried to do say on my own which i've been mm. as um consistent with and mm. that definitely has to do with the accountability we have to each other like yeah. even you know for full transparency even for this i read um, these books a few weeks ago now. And when it came to last night, I was like, oh crap, we're doing the podcast tomorrow. <laughs> do I have, do yeah. I still have that knowledge in mind? And it was yeah. like, if I was just doing that project on my own, I probably would have taken that thought and be like, oh, that's right. I'll do it tomorrow. Or like, yeah. do you know what I mean? I'll put it off a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, well, no, we'll, we've set a time. I've told Will I'll be there. He's relying on me. Like, I'll just, and so, yeah, I refreshed myself and, and I'm here and mm. we're talking about it. So that exactly, there's definitely yeah. that I'd like to be able to use that effortless strategy to apply that accountability to myself as well without, without having to need mm. someone else, but mm. you can definitely use other people to make that easier for you. Can't you? Absolutely. I think, um, kind of sticking on the, the effortless side of things, you know, he talks about, um, you know, uh, what's he say? He says like having the courage to be rubbish. So yes. I think we, when, when, when we first started, we were kind of like, oh, well, we, we literally just have to like put a podcast, like put a podcast yeah. out. We're like, oh, it'll be what it will be, but we are putting yeah. this online and it kind of forces the issue a little bit. Yeah. And definitely. You know, I was kind of listening to him in a, um, a podcast on modern wisdom. He's talking about how like, it's just get the, like, um, the guy on the podcast is like yeah. writing articles and blog posts. He's like, just yeah. get them out every like Wednesday, tell yourself like yeah. Wednesday, <laughs> 9 a.m. It's going out. And I think yep. I like the thought of having more of those in, in my life. And there's, I guess there's certain tasks that kind of like trickle along and there's kind of no rush to get them done. But I guess if yeah. you treated it, I guess treating things as important and give time blocking to do specific things as you yeah. kind of spoke about last week. And the one thing like, 
if it's that important, like give it the due time it needs, not sort of this kind of half ass attention. Yes. As well. So yeah. I, I'll throw a spanner in there. So he also, he talked about another concept called buffering, right? Ah, to, yes. To make your life easier. So w- there's nothing worse, right? Than you're coming up on a deadline and there's just, mm. y- you now realize, well, there's just not the time to get this done the way I want to mm. for what now mm. it has to be in. And the idea mm. of a, a buffer is that it's it it keeps two things apart which if they come together will damage each other mm, so he mm. uses the example of like driving a car right and if you're if you're on the motorway you keep two chevrons apart from the, from the car in front yeah. of you and like yeah if you're tailgating someone that's you're not having a safe buffer and he talks about how to execute and to feel effortless with what you say yes to we kind of need these buffers um in place whether that's well it might be time but there might be other types of buffers Mm. and but then on the flip side of that i i could imagine creating these sort of indefinite buffers um Mm. for the sake of trying to live more peacefully and less stressed but actually sometimes having like like what the example you just gave with the guy writing the blog post, actually just saying it's every Wednesday, even if it gets yeah. to Tuesday night and it's a bit like, oh, I'm not too sure about this. Just getting that routinized consistency in is actually mm-hmm. helpful as well. So I'm wondering how we might balance those two ideas. Well, I, I think a concept he does kind of expand on in buffering is having like an upper and lower limit. Mm. I'm not sure if this applies fully to what I'm saying. I think it does, but it's sort of saying that and it's something um, you spoke about in Atomic Habits, you know, around yeah. casting a vote for yourself, like simply turning up. So kind of like the lower limit of writing this blog post is like, um, is you know, to work towards it. It's like, could I do 10 minutes a day in the five days leading up to it, mm. writing like 50 words per day? Yep. But then the maximum, the maximum to do the upper limit would be doing one hour yeah. In which like you would start to be pushing yourself too hard and like yeah. the, the quality would go would go down. So I think what he's saying with buffs is there's like an upper and lower right. limit. Like yeah. you you know, like if life gets busy and hectic, which it will, like predict, know that it will. Yeah. What can you consistently show up and do mm. with expecting that that will happen? I guess yeah. that's sort of like keeping it manageable, but also not so simple that you don't get anything done. Like you know, yeah. saying like, could you open up your laptop five times a day? Yeah. Like, as like that could be the ultimate lower limit. Then yeah. like the upper limit is like doing seven hours a day working on it, and that's too much because yeah. you'll lose yeah, enthusiasm yeah. and you you'll burn out and you'll stop enjoying it, and your the quality will go down. So yes, that I'm reminds sure me. Think of that. Yeah. He, oh yeah. yeah, no, he talked about um, don't do today what you can't recover from by tomorrow. Yeah, he yes, phrased it more that, yeah. succinctly than that. But and then he expands like what you can't recover from this week. That's right. right, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. the idea is that yeah, you will just burn yourself out and you know, the cliche of life's a marathon, not a sprint, sort of thing. So yeah. Yeah, I like that idea that that actually, yes, when we have deadlines that creep up on us, it's probably because we've procrastinated in the meantime and not set these mm. lower limits. And mm. meant that, um, for example, uh, yeah, this is, I've been doing it the last two months with with a friend where we've kept each other accountable to write a hundred words a day. <clears throat> yes. Um, yeah. Interestingly, we've not done the upper limit thing; we've just done the lower limit. But like, that's an example of that. Well, if you just keep that consistency, and then by the time the the Wednesday deadline rolls around, you mm. if as long as you have like a lower limit of I suppose quality or something that you've hit like have i written this amount of words have i covered th- this many ideas and have i proofread it once like maybe that's just yeah. the lower limit you need to publish the thing um, yes yeah it doesn't have to be perfect which holds mm. us back as well i'm uh, i'm interested i mean this is the the part of the book that i enjoy the most um was stuff in part three eliminate so yeah. how can we cut out the trivial many so this requires okay. asking tough questions and trade-offs so saying you know this requires um eliminating any activity that's misaligned with what you are intending to achieve yeah and we need we want like concrete and inspirational um 
<laughs> reasons to do things. And um, so a non-essentialist has like vague mission statements and no yeah. guiding principles, whereas a essentialist has a concrete and inspirational strategy that's meaningful and and memorable. Um, yes. To kind of summarise the front of it, but the the parts I really liked because they're covered in green highlighter and bold notes, <laughs> like so dare the power of a graceful no, yeah, and uncommitting. So um, yes, win big by cutting your losses sooner. So there's plenty in here that like I yeah. I absolutely loved, and I suppose um just to kind of uh, warm up to this, like there's a uh, the story about the the guy who this kind of like guy works in business like always yeah. leaves the office at like 5 25 every single day oh, yeah. no matter what like if it's in in like the middle of a meeting <laughs> yeah <laughs> if it's like been a busy day or a slow day like he'll always leave at that time and i think that's sort of um you know like he's saying no to doing any work that goes into his personal life mm. like whatsever it's like a, it's a it's a firm no and like people around him like kind of got to know that that's like who he is and he has a reputation of like mm. holding those boundaries. And I think, I think a key part of kind of related to the last bit I said there is like often these things can feel like nerve wracking or we feel like we might be humiliated or we're disappointing others. And there's mm. this thing called like normative conformity. Yep. So it's sort yep. of like that we, we kind of conform to not wanting anyone to feel awkward by saying no. And, you know, we, there's kind of like these, an internal conflict around, these external pressures coming from other people. So we're like, yep. ah, I like I had an example the other day of like, I left a training at 4.30 because it said it'd be done at 4.30. Yeah. And yeah, like, yeah. in part of me, it's like, ah, oh, should like the social norm is like, you know, let this finish and wrap it up. But actually I was yep. kind of done and I'd learned everything I need to do. So I just like got up and left, you yeah. know? Yeah. Whereas like yeah. the external pressures that everyone in the room feels that they need to stay beyond the time that the training was supposed to finish. Mm. Um, as an example, I, I think to summarize, like courage is key, but we also need to be clear about like what's important to us. Like this guy's yeah. family life is important. Like me getting home on time, there was like a knock on effect if I got home late. So yeah. I was like, well, yeah. that's like, I'm, I'm not going to stick around for this training. So yeah, it's a long winded yeah. way of saying like, say no. And <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember you and I talking about this and well, there was a couple of things, right? I think is I was giggling on a voicemail to you <laughs> as, I was, well, as I'd left the training. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of them was it wasn't just you were getting back later, but mm -hmm. it knocked back to the next train you'd be able to catch. I thought that was quite important. But also the the reframing of these norms and the fears we have. So, for example, the norm here is that you're the rude one for stand, for leaving before they've the organizers have wrapped things up. Whereas actually what's rude is that a boundary has been set that you've all contracted to and agreed to, and they've broken yeah. it by continuing the training beyond the time. And so yeah. it's like reframing the fact that yeah. no, I'm, I'm, I'm not the rude one for getting up at half four and leaving there. If anyone's the rude one, they're the rude ones for um, breaking <laughs> the boundaries yeah. they set. Yeah. 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 It's true. It's, it's like, and I think there's that social norm of like, okay, we'll all just stick around. But like if everyone just like got up and yeah, left, like, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of this in, in therapy world, right? Because well, boundaries are really important and like playing and breaking boundaries are a whole part of our uh, psychological history and health. And it, at this mm -hmm. um, trait, uh, these workshops I was at in Italy, like, there's a lot of that where like, like, there's a lot more of that where if the workshop time ends, lots of people will just get up and leave before it's finished. And like, we, we kind of know like there's more of a norm in the therapy world that, Oh yeah, this is a boundary thing. And like, we, we all know what they're doing. It's yeah. It's sort of okay. Respected in a different way, I think than maybe from the business world. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. True. It's sort of like, it kind of goes back into what we're saying at the beginning, like social pressures to stay back from work mm. late and, do things, you know, kind of, um, that's something I'm, I'm navigating in a, in my new, one of my new roles where I'm sort of, you know, kind of noticing that people kind of stay beyond the contracted hours of work. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah. That, um, how do I sort of kind of stick to my boundaries like in that sense? Like yeah. I, I don't want to get home late. I don't want to be at work longer than I need to. Longer than you've been contracted to. Yeah. And kind of the, yeah. 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 And the aspects around like, um, 
like doing overtime. So, oh, you'll get it as overtime. We can take it right. as time in time in lieu. It's like, yeah. no, I, I just want to leave on time every day. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you know, I don't want to like, um, yeah. Anyway, I guess that's like a personal example. But um, it just, so I guess some, some of the key things here, like I, I thought were really interesting is like separate the decision from the relationship. So when you're saying yeah. no, you're not denying the person. Yeah. And it's like, um, once you make this separation, then we just need to find the commun- the courage and compassion to communicate it. Yes. Well, also in that is that it's setting personal norms, right? So um, if people are used to you, like people pleasing, then, then the first time you leave on time when there's an expectation to stay might be more shocking to people who know you and your habits. Mm-hmm. But once they're you know, once they're used to that's what you do, then people are less likely to take it personally and feel, Mm. you know, rejected or something. Not that that's within our control, but um, by setting it as a norm for yourself, then he talks about trading, um, uh, trading popularity for respect. respect, Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless (laughs) you're staring at that. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah, and I, I think, um, and he says, like, in those moments, like, focus on the trade-off. And that's something I've always, not always, but, like, more recently kind of had in my mind. I said, well, if I, if I choose to say yes, like, what am I sacrificing, you know? Mm. Like, and by right. saying no, what, what, what do I get to keep? What, what do I get out of this by saying no? Like, you've got to yes. think, like... The non-essentialist, yeah. the way he describes it, will think, how can I do everything? But the essentialist knows that every yes is a trade-off. So by clarifying what is the trade-off I'm making here, it helps you make mm-hmm. a more, uh, I suppose, um, honest decision. Yeah, and he had, he had he gave an example of a like um, a, a girl in a workplace who was asked to do a task by her boss, and her response was like, "Oh, so what would you like me to deprioritize? Yes, <laughs> this extra extra task, you know, yeah, like making yeah. it clear to people that like I." if your capacity is limited, like yeah. uh, it's not, and it's like, or yeah. Like, or yeah. When, <laughs> yeah Here's so. the projects I'm currently working on. Which one would you like me to sacrifice to work on what you've just asked? Me? <laughs> yeah. I love, love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's saying like other, you know, there's things, you know, like Tim Ferriss would, would back, you know, kind of like um, automated emails and um, the stuff around like, what should I deprioritize like humor, um, mm. use of humor and saying like, or, if someone asks a favor from you, kind of like make it clear what you will and what you won't do. So it's like, oh, can I borrow your car? He's like, yep, you can borrow my car. Um, I'll be around at two o'clock for you to pick up the keys, but I'm not going to like come yeah. give you the keys. If right, you know right, 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 right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, stuff like that. And um, or offering other people to do it. He said um, the awkward pause, like count to three before delivering your verdict. And I think it's kind of like, it's, it's humorous, but at the same time, it's sort of like, letting people know that like, ah, oh, if you're requesting something from me, like I need to sit and think about this. And I think there's mm. a, a respect that, and also, also something we've spoken about before, like when you say yes, like related to like nonviolent communication as well, like you, you're saying yes from a willing place that you want to do this. You've yeah. made an educated decision with the information you have, that this is something you want to engage in. Like yeah. You want yeah. to yeah. support or help that person. And on the flip side and, of and that, when, in terms yeah. of nonviolent communication, yeah. I don't want to be yeah. someone who you, I'm on the end of your yes, but you really mean no, right? Like yes. yeah. it, that sounded complicated, but I don't want you to sacrifice yourself for me. I only want you to do things willingly. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I'm just sort of a, a tyrant or, or a narcissist. Do you know what I mean? I, I want yeah, you to I know, want yeah. to do the things we do together. Exactly. <laughs> and then they know. <laughs> And they know when you say no, it's been considered and it's respectful. Um, it comes back to lying, that one of the very earlier books we yeah. uh, covered. That Yeah, the, the one time you, I don't know, show me some of your writing and I say, I don't like that, I don't like that, this is vague. <laughs> then next yeah. time you show me something, I'm like, this is really good, I really like this bit. Then you really believe me because you know I will be honest. Yes. Same yeah. with these yeses and nos. <laughs> mm. Part of um part of that section as well is kind of around uncommitting. So he's like, win big by cutting your losses. So saying no sooner. And I think some of the things that stood out here, you know, ad- admit failure early on to like mm. begin your success. And he says, um, apply zero based budgeting. So like every use of time and energy has and resources, you have to justify it anew. Don't do it because you've done it before. Right. It was yeah. Like, 
So I want to yeah. clarify this. So there's a yeah. difference here in this section, isn't there, between um, saying no to things that are coming in mm. versus how do you turn around a no that you've already continually mm. been saying mm. yes to? Mm. So this uncommitting, this cutting your losses might be a more difficult process than saying no up front because yes. you've already laid out these expectations for people. Yes. And some of the, you know, I kind of list off some of these, um, you know, says like, stop making casual commitments from now on, pause before you speak, get over the fear of missing out um, to fight this fear, run a reverse pilot. So he says like, remove something to see what the impact is, which I really like, like sometimes, and that's part of kind of that, um, trying to define what's important and essential to you, like mm. often removing something, you know, to see like what impact does it have on my on my life and how important is it and how much do I do I miss it? Oh, like an experiment. You know, like I'll just, yeah, like if I'm unsure, I'll try removing it as like a trial period and see what yeah. effect it has. Okay. Yeah. So like try try not, I don't know, talking to that person or doing that job or doing like <laughs> yeah. whatever it is, you know. Um he says like don't don't um don't be afraid to pull out of things or change your mind. Which is mm. like, I think there's a part of that as well that like people feel and that's where like I guess kind of going back to like maybe a bit of digital minimalism and some of the uh, technology stuff and my yeah. reflections around getting off social media is that like, I often like, I guess like on a Facebook event invites you, people kind of sort of say yes, but then pull out or say maybe, or mm -hmm. do, do you know what I mean? Like you kind of like, if, if you're <clears throat> removed, if the systems in place aren't there for you to sort of kind of say maybe, or say yes to things you don't want to, then you're kind of removed from that and you can just make a decision. Right. Kind of separate to the to the invite. Maybe I'm not sure if that's something you can like relate to, but you know, kind of it's uh I guess in when you when people invite you to things, it's mm -hmm. usually like a phone call or like a, a specific okay. someone's reached out to you specifically rather than kind of getting invited to something vaguely and then responding vaguely. Right, right, sense. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But um th those things I think are really good. You know, Tim Ferris spoke about that, like I know you were on a train to, to Italy and you uh you stopped reading a book halfway through because it just wasn't quite <laughs> yeah. doing it for you. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that yeah, that cutting your losses, that can be hard, especially with books. Once you put like some investment into something, it's yeah, hard to like yeah. commit to uh well to uncommit, as he says. Yeah. Uh, there's two fun. ways he sort of summarized this section. One was um this quote that um it's either hell yeah or no. <laughs> so yeah, he, he calls the, it the 90% rule. rule. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. either like you're night if if it's a 90% yes that you're enthusiastic about it, that you really want it. Like that's how you because he that's can be a rule that helps you make these decisions. Similar with the Marie Kondo thing, right? If you're looking yeah. at an item you have and you're like, well, it could be kind of useful, and this is maybe a 40, 50 percent yes, then it's a no. <laughs> so it has to be a 90 percent mm. to, to let it in. I would say the almost like thinking about like the Marie Kondo process would be a great like private warm-up to this. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of thinking like I think I've definitely in doing the some of the like the minimalist challenges we've done and um, kind of getting rid of a few things and doing the Marie Kondo method. It's certainly got me like practicing being more like clinical in my decision making, more purposeful. Yeah. And yeah I've kind of yeah. translated that to other areas of my life. I am, um, I'm, I'm conscious of maybe uh, just kind of doing effortless a little bit of justice. I know yeah. we've touched on it throughout and stuff. And um, I, I think they're certainly linked together, but I suppose as we're kind of, you know, coming towards the final quarter of our potty um there's you know kind of effortless's main main idea really is kind of that you know our motivation is a limited resource and we can we can yeah. burn out quickly and there's a lot of responsibilities and you know a, a part i really liked about this is kind of you know inverting the question like how can we make things easier as opposed to <clears throat> often asking the question yeah like what more do i need to do like, do I need to work harder? Do I need to spend more time on this? Please actually like asking like, what if this could be easy? What if this yeah. process could be simplified and shortened? I think that's kind of a real key part of <clears throat> what he's trying to say. I, I want to jump in on this because uh, I liked his story. So Essentialism was published in 2014, right? And then Effortless in, in 2021. And 
in the intro of Effortless, he talks about how off the back of writing Essentialism, he started getting so much more invites, mm. publicity, <clears throat> and like the irony that he found from that was he ended up like stretching himself too thin, overworked, say, yeah. <laughs> kind of saying too many yes essential to too much. Yeah. But yeah, he was like, it's not that I'm every everything is meeting my 90% criteria, but like I'm yeah. getting so many great opportunities yes. now that, but I'm not enjoying, like I'm, I'm stressed, I'm overworked. And like <laughs> mm. <laughs> the irony that I've gone back to this. So effortless was uh, almost like a personal response for him in mm. response to his uh, yes. success and, and um, the opportunities that arose from writing the first book, which I found mm. quite cute and funny. <laughs> Yes, yeah, and then he kind of talks about the um, the like uh, glass of pebbles analogy, where mm. sort of if you if you um, you know fill up the you need to put in your essential things first, so kind of like yeah. The, the big so if glass, your es- essentials are the yeah. if you fill in a glass jar, if if the essential things are kind of bigger rocks and the non-essential things are like sand or tiny pebbles, mm. if you pour in the sand first, you won't be able to fit the big rocks in. But if you put the mm. big rocks in first, you can then pour in the sand yeah. around it. So he's kind of saying, mm. you know, the the crap <laughs> will get done <laughs> if you even if you prioritize other things, like the, the kind mm. of little things will get themselves done. But if you start with the more trivial things, um, you'll never get around to the most important. It does kind of bring around b- bigger questions of like, you know, why are we trying to get so much done? Why are we what is a society or certain individuals yeah. like why are we living so relentlessly like so we're not like we're depriving ourselves of like rest and kind of happiness and laughter and like aspects of joy and things for the sake of kind of just pushing ourselves it's, it's, mm. it's like a whole or- orientation and perspective mm. change for a lot of people in society to kind of take this on you know so and like like life doesn't have to be so difficult. Like we don't have to add all these extra pressures onto ourselves mm. and try and get so much done. But I guess it's hard when you feel there's a lot of um, targets or pressures or you know, yeah. you're short on time and things. But I guess it's sort of, and I think a really key part of this is saying like, if you don't, you know, what's he say? It says like, if you don't decide your priorities, someone else will. Yeah, yeah I think yeah, it's a real key. thing around like t- taking your control back and being like, well, look, this is my life. Like, this is how I want to live it. Like, I don't want to mm. be responding to anybody else's agendas unless they like agree with mine or like yeah, things yeah. that I I want to do. You know, and it's a, it's a, I think it's a big thing to ask yourself. Like, how what areas of your life are you just sort of kind of doing because you've been told to do them? Do you even want to be doing them? Like, is this? Mm useful like you and obviously you, know, you don't want to look back at sort of like you wasted time or you put all your priorities in the wrong areas or you took things too seriously you didn't have time yeah. to like kind of smell the roses yeah 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 mm. or even like yeah definitely to smell the roses but even to do things which are perhaps hard work or uh, effort mm. intensive but mean a lot to you you know we can yeah. end up putting off things that I don't know, projects or, um, or yeah, yeah, plans, ideas, even things that do take work, but mm. that matter. And yeah, I'm equally just taking time to um, play and enjoy. Mm. And that's part, that's part of it. You said, you know, kind of how to get into that effortless state, you know, sort of kind of um, what if, what if this activity could be, could be fun? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, if, yeah. What, if, what if doing this task could be fun? I suppose um, I'm trying to think of some examples in in my life, but I guess th- this is a this podcast is an example of kind of it's. I find it fun. It's a fun yeah. way to consume knowledge, right? Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. Nice to talk. talk it's about definitely it, more so. fun. Yeah. So it's fun, obviously, like chatting, but it's also like knowing, reading something, knowing you're either have or are going to also read it. I can Mm. have you in mind whilst reading the book. And that makes it a more like, even if we're not communicating in that moment, it's almost like Mm. there's a third person. There's me, the writer and you in this reading process. It's it's cool. It adds enjoyment to it. Nice. Cool. Is there anything else kind of on your mind or 
That's uh, most of most of the key things I, I enjoyed. So, um, yeah, there, there's kind of a lot to cover across two books, right? But uh, yeah, they, I think they do go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I suppose the last point on essentialism reminded me of something from Atomic Habits, which was the difference between doing and being, and mm. his suggestion of once you have uh, i suppose internalized and agreed with this essentialism idea mm. is that it's not just not just to see it as a strategy but to mm. almost take it as part of your identity mm. um and that might make the whole process easier as well when you see yourself as a not just someone who you know minimizes things or is able to say no and be assertive and prioritize but mm. someone like that's a sense of your who you are, like uh, yeah, at your core. <laughs> mm. I like it. yeah, sort of. That, I guess that helps that orientation we're talking about. You know, towards yeah. like it's the filter in which you see everything through. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. I, I definitely would. It's nice to have it all laid out in this way, and I can kind of see how I'm quite. Yeah, it's some of the first things in essentialism I kind of got done quite well. I'm pretty good at saying no to things I don't want to do and even uncommitting to things mm. and mm. like knowing what's important to me. There's more yeah. of the effortless stuff that I'm like, actually, yeah, I end up even in pursuing the things I find important. I end up stressing myself out, overthinking about yeah. it, and yeah. doing it in a way that's not routinized or, or doing things in ways that... Uh, I'm just spending too many too much time like ticking off chores in a way that's not enjoyable. Yeah. So that yeah. that's the stuff I'm like I'm really gonna like want to take away and pursue more of. Yeah, and sort of um might require some like strategizing or sort yeah. of a bit of analyzing of kind of what areas of your life you kind of you could simplify. Yeah. Even the simple things like a suggestion, like if I'm doing a certain chore, like you know, once I've decided, you know, like I said with the, the tax return example, like I've actually strategized mm -hmm. the, you know, the the optimum when to do it and for how long, etc. Even when doing that, like, can I just work on an album I enjoy and yeah, just s s small things like that? Can I like, you know, be bobbing along and singing whilst doing something that's a bit um, mindless? It's mm. simple things, just letting yourself enjoy what. Um, yeah, those kind of like many have tos that are around. I don't know anything around. I suppose definitely being self employed, but we we all have things mm. we kind of like a sort of means to an end that we don't necessarily enjoy, but we care about the outcome of. Yeah, like d domestic, ch like we don't, yeah. don't want to like resent things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, mate. Well, that was um, yeah, that was uh, that was great. Thanks for. Thanks for showing up on time as always and having a great <laughs> podcast. And yeah, it's great. It's good to good to chat again. Yeah, and, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Looking forward to the next one, which will be on screen or not. <laughs> we, 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 we haven't, still, we haven't still decided, decided, have we? Yeah, <laughs> I haven't quite decided. So um, yeah, but um, yeah, good good to be back and uh, nice to do a two for one deal for our listeners. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah definitely, cool. it felt like uh, you know they were wedded to one another. And I'll be listening to most books we do from now on. I think it's, mm. it's quicker, it's more enjoyable, it's more streamlined. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm less stressed as I do it, and uh, it uh, deals with time constraints in a lot more fluid way. So, mm. yeah, yeah. I Thanks, will. Greg. I've I've, <laughs> I've learned as well from that in terms of this project that I don't have to write notes like as I'm reading. And often the author pretty much does the work for you. Like especially, mm. for example, some books like the one we did, the one thing, every chapter ended with a summary of key points. Yeah, same with this one. It's kind of like I'm wasting it, yeah. my time mm. if I, as I'm reading through, I stop to write things that like sometimes mm. you can look back at what they've done. I mean, it is, it is nice to use your own hand and all that and to integrate this process. But mm. I found that reading at least a big chunk if not all the book and then just succinctly making the notes is a much um uh what's the word much more effortless and streamliner process and i get the same outcome from it if not a better outcome 
because they're pretty even accessing yeah accessing summaries elsewhere as well off each other like yeah. we kind of yeah, like yeah. i send you my notes you send me the notes to another one yeah cool nice one mate we'll chat to you next time yes take care mate yeah, mate. Bye. Bye. Bye.